Hello again, Saints. I want to thank everyone for joining us for another First Corinthians survey. And we are looking at First Corinthians. We're in chapter 12. And we are looking at when Paul says, therefore, by one spirit, uh, therefore, we, uh, by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body. And, we're, and how is that the case? We're going we're to look at that. We're going to look at some of the some of the doctrines that are oftentimes um, not looked at the way they ought to be. But again, we're looking at First Corinthians. First Corinthians, and this is lesson 22. Lesson 22, and as I said before, we're looking at chapter 12. We're looking at baptize into body into one body. How? How 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 is this done? What's the what 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 is Paul um what is being said by that? Is this the one baptism? Yeah, we know it's not water, but and have been all made to drink into one spirit? And, and and how is how is that the case? How how have we been all made to drink into one spirit? Because oftentimes, many times, people will read that, they'll read the verses, and 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 they'll even say, "Yeah, we're we the we are baptized into Christ. We are in Christ." And the whole thing, when Paul tells us about that over in Romans chapter six, in Romans chapter six, when we see that. Uh, how shall um, um, shall uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live therein any longer? And then it says, "Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into His death?" And every single person that rightly divides the word of truth would say, "Yeah, that was that was a one baptism. That was faith came by hearing, hearing the word." And I was placed into Christ, out of Adam, now in Christ, no longer in Adam, but now in Christ. And that baptism came by hearing of the word. Paul's also telling the saints over there in Romans 6 to, to hear the word and, and, and understand that they ought to walk in newness of life. But that's by the word that they're going to submit onto. It's by the living word of the living God that how they ought to submit onto to be able to 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 reckon themselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. And as Paul's gonna Paul says over Romans six, and this is not a Romans six study, folks, but he says, as you know, obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Obeying from the heart the form of doctrine which is delivered would have the saved in Christ continue in godliness if they walk as faithful. But what I want to do as we're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and what I'd like to do is go right into the verses at hand. When you get a chance, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be looking at verse 1 in a second. But we're going to be looking at the whole issue. And as I said in the last survey, the last study, God the Father, his will, his life, his way, the ministry. It was given unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the Word. The Word became flesh. And when I say it was given unto him, I'm talking about going back to when our Lord was on the earth here. And, and the Word became flesh. The Lord said when he left, he said, when I leave, he told those apostles, the spirit of truth is going to guide you. He, he shall guide you in all truth. And it says, and the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter, he, and then it talks about the comforter as a he will. And we see verses given unto us about the Holy Ghost teacheth. The Holy Ghost teacheth because the, the, the doctrine, the ministry of the Holy Ghost was given unto the apostles, ones to write it down. And we have it in front of us. That's its spirit. That's the mechanics of the spirit and allowing it to work affection within us. We went over that about being led by the spirit. Spirit speaketh expressly. The whole idea, it, it speaketh, speaketh. Every time you, you you look at it, it speaketh. God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. All the things that God had prepared for them that love him. The ones that love him knows you're going to be going through the sufferings. Uh, uh, what it, it tells you over in Philippians 1, 29. For unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Those are the things which God has prepared for them that love him, not the things people assume today. You know, I was talking with a brother today and 
you know, um, his father was going through some things, you know, and, uh, you know, he had one, a family member wanted to pray for him and all these, these other things, you know, and, and the things that they assume, the, this church world assumes that the things that God is giving is the, all the glory of this world and, and the health, wealth, relationship, that type of stuff. That's not what God is doing today. He's what he's prepared for us that love him, the ones that truly love him with selfless love, they see the glory that that there is, that things that God had prepared for, for us who love him. But let's move on. Let's come over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look at verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. But notice the Holy Ghost, and what Paul is giving them to understand is by the Holy Ghost's ministry, what is given from the Holy Ghost to give what he hears from, from God, the will of God, from the New Testament unto us, the death of the testator, that a man, a man could speak, a man could call, a man could say, but he, in this context, he'd be, he'd be saying, calling, and speaking wrong by the Spirit, the living Word, of the living God. Look at verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And what we're going to do, I don't know if we covered the whole issue of the oneness of the Spirit, but if we didn't, we're, we're going to, um, and what I mean by oneness I don't know if, how far we walk these verses down. So what we'll do this time, we're going to walk them all the way down until we get to uh, the baptized by one spirit. So I'll I'll just go over this and I, I can't recall right now. Therefore, now there are diversities of gifts. There, there's different gifts, but the same spirit, the same living word of God. Same word. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. In other words, it, well, I, you know what that means. It, government and administrations and his will. Um, and it's also going to say the same thing, diversity of operations, but the same God. Because the, we know it's the same Lord, same God, same spirit. Notice all three are one. And that the, the word, the word is, is at the, as that help me. But look at verse six, and there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh in all in all. It, it, it's one Lord, one faith. It would, this is what's being shown here, Ephesians, Ephesians um, uh, four. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, and, and, and the unity of the Spirit. That that's all being shown here. At this unity, the oneness of the the togetherness. And oneness of the living word, the living God. Um, look at verse 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And I do think I we did cover this, these verses here, uh, if I can recall. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But as you see here, the manifestation of the spirit, the manifestation of the living word of God is given to every man to profit with all. You know, that's the only way a man, a godly man could profit. The only way a godly man could profit with all would be by the word of God. That's the only thing always spoken about the man's good. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And about let all things be done unto edifying. And, and I mean, so many different verses, Ephesians 4, where it talks about, about, about the edifying of itself in love. And all that building up, to, that's to the good. That, that's how a man can profit, a godly man can profit. Today, people think you profit because God gave you something. Uh, again, as I said, sent, sent a spouse your way or, or, or gave you a new job. 
or you hit the lottery. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and, and all these things that, that we see, we see a uh, uh, said in the name of God, in the name of God, our father and, and, and our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. We see all these things, these carnal things, people preaching another Jesus. They're, they're assuming our God, God, the father is and they say, well, I got a relationship with him. And they'll assume he's doing things carnally, physically carnally about them that he's not doing. They'll say, oh, we're catching the Holy Ghost. But, folks, let's just move on. Come over to uh, verse 8. <coughs> Woo, sorry about that. <laughs> Come over to verse 8. Uh, woo. <laughs> Uh, boy, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8. Maybe I'm allergic to all the bad teaching out here that I'm even talking about. Uh, let's see, verse 8. Okay, okay. <laughs> for to one, and, and I want you to notice, he's going to be saying, for to one, in other words, for to one, saint is given, but see, they're all in the body. Each one of these saints, Paul's going to be making mention they're all part of the body. It's not a structure of um, power. It's not a, um, well, this guy's greater than that guy or that guy's greater than this guy. He's given something because he's he's better. No, it, it, you, you're going to see, because remember who Paul is addressing. He's addressing these Corinthians. <laughs> he's addressing these Corinthians who were babes in understanding and they had no care for one another. So when he says here, for to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge <clears throat> by the same spirit. What he's saying for to one is giving by when he says the spirit and folks, I, I get the whole idea about Acts chapter two. And, and he said when you about the gift of the Holy Ghost and, uh, uh, they, they, they would be given is the spirit and all that stuff to be able to speak in tongues. I, I get all that, but this, what's being shown here, this isn't Acts two. This isn't. Um, this is the the word of God is going to be given, and, and notice it's going to be going out. This is all going after the word of God. Let, let's just read it. <clears throat> For by one spirit, the word of wisdom. How do we get the word of wisdom today, folks? It's in the in the book. Another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. How do you get the word of knowledge today? By the same living word, the same word, the same living word, word of God to another faith by the same spirit. And, you know, when we go over in the next study, we'll go over the spiritual gifts and all that stuff. So I'm not really after that right now. So I'll. I'll um, touch on that when we when we um, go in the next study. We're going to deal with the spirit, the temporary, ex, uh, the the temporary less excellent way <clears throat> to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. But notice another faith by the same living word to another gifts of healing by the same living word. And I understand, as I said before. It's the Holy Ghost ministry. The Holy Ghost is giving it out. But what it is, is the word of God is where it is, how this is done. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 10, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers of tongues, another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the one and self same spirit. Dividing to every man severally as notice this he will and some people say well see that's the Holy Ghost doing this the Holy Ghost is the one giving it to to, to people to to uh, uh, severally as he will folks it, it in looking at and I hope you go back and get that um, get the last study I did on the, the spirit the mechanics of the spirit because when we looked at the he and the comforter, he, the spirit of truth, he, it's, it's all the same, but the way, but, but the ministry being that it's the ministry, it's the spirit. 
And that's that's the case because it's not most people. If people would think that it's the Holy Ghost himself pouring this out onto people. Now you're going to have a problem because now you're going to in, in order for you to go get your get what is being taught, be, be, be led by the spirit after the spirit in the spirit, uh, uh, spirit maketh intercession. You're going to assume that it's the Holy Ghost himself. Do, uh, doing this here. And as I said, I'll get deeper into this when we go over spiritual gifts, because that's what Paul's in the midst of discussing right here. Verse 11 again, but all these work that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will. And as I said, and we're going to see when you know the purpose for the spiritual gifts and you when you when we see until that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. And we'll see when he, as he, he gave some apostles and prophets and all that for, you, you'll understand this. Look at verse 12. For as the body is one and hath many members and all members of the that one body, um, being many are one body, so also is Christ. Paul is bringing to their remembrance again, as I said before, <clears throat> he wants them to know that Christ is one and you, you ought to be also. And we are one in one body. It's, it's all these work the same, that one and self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he will, but not preferring one over the other. Look at verse 13, because this is what we're after. <clears throat> For by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body? And whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink <clears throat> into one spirit. And as I'm going to touch back on that again, I'll um, I'll uh, touch back on that. Um, eh, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, I'll touch back on that um, in a second. When, I, when we get ready to go, um, when we get ready to look at the last part of it, uh, and been all made to drink into one spirit. Because first thing I want to look at is, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's the first thing I want to. I'd like to cover here, and um, by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and and we're gonna look at the. I'm gonna look at the mechanics of it. Um, we're gonna look at what Paul means when, when Paul says that there. We're going to go to verses. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Acts. Because many times people do not understand what Paul is doing in the book of Acts. That's why you got all these different different beliefs now with the, with the oh no, there's no uh, judgment seat of Christ. Paul must not have been talking to, to the Gentiles in his pre-prison epistles. So if that's the case, then there's no rapture. There's no um, uh, judgment seat of Christ. There's um, these epistles don't apply to us, but these do, or some of them do. Throw them out, folks. The main reason why, one of the main reasons why, what well, actually the main reason is because they don't understand what Paul is doing in the Book of Acts. They're assuming that Paul is going out water baptizing people, and that's not the case. Paul is also giving unto people the word and by faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And those people who Paul uh, spoke unto became baptized. They came, became baptized into the body of Christ. They, out of Adam, now into Christ. For by one spirit are y'all baptized into one body. And, and we just read the verses over in Romans 6. Know ye not that so many of us are baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death? Paul wrote this in the book of Romans here. That was before Acts 28. In which baptism is he talking about? He's talking about the one baptism. We, we ought to know that. We'll all say we know that. But if Paul was still offering the kingdom to Israel and all those other things, yeah, this would be water baptism. Maybe Apollos need to come talk to Paul and get Paul straight. And Priscilla and Aquila, 
But let's move on. Come over to uh, Acts 16 now. Acts 16. And look at Acts 16. Let's look at verse 13. Acts 16, verse 13. Give me a second. I'm flipping this board over <laughs> because I want to do a little illustration. Um, basically, an illustration from the um, um, what we're going over here about the about the baptism thing there. So, <laughs> all right, let's go. Uh, Acts 16, verse 13. And, um, and on the Sabbath, he went out of the city. Hmm. I can't see that there. No wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Acts, uh, I got to write this down again. I kind of erased this a little bit here. Uh, won't take me long. Just hold on for a second, folks. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of rubbed off there for a second. All right. Now, where were we? Uh, okay. On the Sabbath, he went out of the city by the riverside, by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Now, anyone seeing that... If someone comes and they sat, sit down to talk, pretty much people know what they're doing. They're teaching, especially if you have Paul. If Paul's going in Acts 16 here and he sits down and he's speaking unto the women which resorted thither, people only look at the issue because it says by the river side. That's where they get hung up at and, and get confused. Oh, no, he must have been water baptizing. It says he sat down. And spake, sat down and spake unto the women. Now, the other thing is, when you look at this here, look at verse 14. And certain women, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller purple of the city of Thy Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened that she attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. You know, and some people look at this they they assume that she was already saved or um that she just needs to get baptized by paul water baptized that's not what's the case this says a certain woman a seller purple of the city of thyatira which worship god heard us okay whose heart the lord opened that she attended unto the things which were spoken of paul spoken of of paul and you, what you got going on here, and I, I hate to go to the backdrop of this, but I did a study on this already. For, uh, the, the first study of Romans, I mean, of 1 Corinthians. Yeah, the first study of 1 Corinthians, I go over this issue, folks, about the baptism. I'm just doing a little, a little refresher here. But what I show is the issue here, what Lydia actually got saved. That's what happened here. The same thing with Cornelius. It was, he was a just man, but he, he was just because he gave alms unto Israel. He, he knew that he was a, a, a Gentile, and he knew that Israel was the preferred nation of God, and they were God's chosen people. And they, the salvage, salvation of God was with Israel. He knew that, and he gave alms unto them like a Gentile would in that kingdom, if the kingdom had been set up. Look at verse 15. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us saying, wait a minute. If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Wait a minute. Who, who, well, who bapt, water baptized her? If she was water baptized, why does she have to besought be Paul? I thought he's, she, she heard Paul. He, they sat down. And spake unto the women. And this is, and when she was baptized, you have to speculate to assume Paul spoke to him. She attended unto those things. The Lord opened her heart, it says, because she heard Paul. Heard us whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of, of Paul. That tells you there, her heart got open because she attended unto what Paul said. And when she was baptized, 
her and her household. And someone said, wait a minute, so it's a process? No, it's, it, Paul tells us that. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, were, were baptized into his death? It's not saying it happens not. The idea is that when it says when she was baptized and her household, she was, in other words, when her heart got open, she came and besought Paul. Come into my house. If you abide, judge me to be faithful to the Lord. Come to my house. Abide there. She constrained us because they were already worshiping, worshiping God. They were already understanding the whole issue there. Now, now come, just come, come down to verse 30 now. Acts 16, verse 30. And this is the jailer. Take a look at the uh, verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Now, the backdrop of this story here is <clears throat> they're in the prison. They're in the prison. They just, um, the chain fell off of them, and, and, and they, they, they were freed, but they're still at the prison. And when... When, when, when Paul says this here in Silas, when they say this, or when he says this, the house, their house is not with them at the prison. Their prison is not the house. They're going to later go to the house. They are going to preach onto the house, the, the, the jailer's household and the jailer, and they will be baptized when they hear faith is going to come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Notice what this says. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. Again, his house was not at the jail. And, and, and because what he's doing, he's saying, yeah, you're going to be saved in your household. And they did go speak unto their, them in their household. Then those, then they said, then, then this says here in verse 32, uh, verse 33, and he took them the same hour of the night. Now, this is, this is what happened after the jail. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. He washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his straightway. Remember, where are they at? Where's, where's, where straightway are they at? They're not at the prison. But look at what he says here, verse 34. And when he brought them into his house, he set me before them rejoicing, believing in God with all his house. Now you see, <clears throat> now you see believing in God with, uh, with all his house. Did they all, did they all believe? Yes, they did. And well, that's what it said there. Because it, Paul told him, see, uh, believe on the Lord. What shall we do to be saved? And, and he told him, and he mentioned his household as well. And if someone told anyone that, what are you going to do? You're going to say, oh, okay. Yeah. You, okay. Well, I'm, I'm saved now in, in my household. No, you're going to bring them to your house. He's giving you the, the, the invitation, so to speak, that your whole household can be saved by hearing the word, by believing on the Lord. And you know, Paul didn't just say only just that. Believe on the Lord, now shall be saved. This man had to know, believe what? Salvation from what? But it, it was the one baptism. Faith came by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And what you see, how it was done, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost gave the ministry unto the, the apostles. He, as the Lord said, whatever you shall hear, it, it, it's going to be given unto you. And the Holy Ghost was given unto the apostles. The, the, the comforter, he shall guide you in all things. The Holy Ghost was given unto Paul. Stephen stood up full of the Holy Ghost and said, even Philip led, uh, uh, carried away by the Spirit. And you got the Holy Ghost and, and, and the Spirit. Spirit the living word of the living God. And <clears throat> therefore, bapt we're baptized into one body. 
by the hearing of the word. And what, what happens, folks, when we hear the word and what you see happen with Lydia, what you see happen with the jailer, and what you're going to see happen with, with, with in Acts 8, chapter 18 in a second, is faith came by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And once they heard the word, and when they heard this, they were baptized into one body by the hearing of the word. It, that's what you're going to see. Now, let's come over to Acts 18 now. Acts 18, and look at verse 7. Acts 18, verse 7. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, named Justice, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. Now, you notice another guy worshiping God? Wait a minute. We've seen, we seen that before. This, this man... As he says, worship God. Well, if he's worshiping God, he's saved, right? <laughs> but notice this here, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. See, this is where when you see um, for a sign to provoke Israel to jealousy, that's what you see about to take place here. His house is right next to the synagogue. And Crispus, now notice this, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians hearing, believed, and were baptized. Now, many people would say, oh, okay, Paul went on to them. They heard the word. And then Paul was water baptizing all those that were there. Oh, boy, Paul is. No, notice what it says here. Hearing, believed. And just right around this time, folks, when you and I, when, I, when I say right around this time, I'm saying right around the same time you see this being given here, um, in verse eight. In verse 20, 24, it's going to say a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an elegant man, mighty in the mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fevered in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So if Paul was water baptizing, as I said, why, why didn't Priscilla and Aquila, who spoke unto um, Apollos and explained the way of God more perfectly unto him, why didn't they, you know, why would Paul be water baptizing? And Paul's not doing it to become, a, uh, uh, to, uh, as many people, you know, you grab, people grab the verse and say, Paul says, to the Jew I became a Jew, to the Gentile I became, and all that. That's not what's going on here. Hearing and believe that we're baptized. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians now. Come over to 1 Corinthians. I'm going to take a look at something here. In the first study, I went over this in the first study. And if you could take a look at that because I go into it a little more deeper, spend more time just on this subject here. And I don't have too much time to go into it <clears throat> in this study here, but Paul is going to, we have to figure out what, which baptism is Paul talking about? Because Paul is going to be saying baptize, not water baptize. And if Paul is talking about baptized as being the one baptized over there in chapter 10, 12, for, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body? What baptized do we think he's speaking of here? Now, I want you to just follow with me. And again, if you got any issue with this, go get that first study. Verse 12. Now I say, now this I say to every one of you that saith, Every one of now, I, now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I of Cephas, and I of Christ. What they should have all been saying is, I am of Christ. That's what they all should have been saying. Because the household of Stephanus knew and were saying, I'm of Christ. And what's going on here is because Paul came and got some saved. Because Apollos came and got some saved, 
because Peter came and got some saved. These people were saying, well, I'm of this guy. I, I, I was brought up under Paul. I'm of, of, of Apollos. And what happened is they heard faith came by hearing, hearing by the word of God, by these men. So what Paul is making mention is who then is Apollos? Who then is Paul? Who then is who then is um, uh, uh, um, Cephas? But ministers by which he believed. And because you got back, because you heard the word and believed and were baptized by us, by hearing the faith. Then. That uh, that doesn't mean that you are of me, that you, you ought to be of Christ. That's what he's that's what he's saying here. And that's why Paul says, if you get to go get the study, folks, believe me, it'll clear up a lot of misunderstanding. That's why Paul is going to say in chapter five, four and five about ye are Christ's and ye are and as Christ is God's. In other words, you're of him. You're not of Peter or of Paul or of Apollos just because we got you saved. They were saying, I am of this guy and that guy. And he was, it, he told them over and over uh, the end of chapter three, and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. And then he told them again, he, he told them again about that in, um, in, in chapter six, you know, chapter six, he says, he says that and, um, uh, over, over and over it, it, whose power they ought to be under folks. So that's why when he says this is Christ in verse 13, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Of course he wasn't. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I see, that's what we need to get this to also. He's saying Christ is not divided. There, there, there's but one. one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then he says, okay, if I got you saved, gave you the gospel and you heard it, was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? That's what he's trying to get them to understand. So that's why he says here, I thank God I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. In other words, I, I'm thankful that I didn't get none of you saved, but Crispus and Gaius. And these, these guys were strong in the faith. These guys were strong in the faith here who Paul got. And we just read about it. We just read that Paul got guy uh, Chris uh, got him saved, and so what Paul is saying, he's saying, well, let me just read the verse. This is what this is why he says he thank God he did not get them saved. It, again, Paul is not saying that he could care less if they are saved. He's saying because they're so carnal. He, watch what he says here lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. Because what he's saying, if I got you saved, you're going to, you could come along and say, Paul was crucified for you, or you were baptized in the name of Paul. And so this is what Paul is saying that, and then he says, verse 16, I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. The household of Stephanus were also strong in the faith. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. And see, Paul, we know it is a true statement. It is a true statement. If, if anyone would say, well, wait a minute, the Lord did not send Paul to water baptize. And that would be uh, that would be true. The Lord did not send Paul to water baptize. The Lord said, but it was, remember, water baptism, it was done away. Peter, Peter even knew. Peter knew that man could forbid water. And, and Peter replayed the matter back over in, in, in Acts chapter 11. He remembered how the Lord said, John truly, uh, well, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. And, and, but ye shall be baptized and all that. But that was what, that was another baptism. They weren't to be looking back at that water baptism. They were to be 
looking for the the, the, the gift of, um, of, of of tongues and all that. It was the unsaved, the unsaved men who would, as Acts 2.38, repent and be water baptized. They were to repent, they were to hear the word. They were to hear the word, hear the word of God, and then they would be water baptized as a um, as, as an act of sanctification unto holiness, a purification, a new identification into, a, well, said that wrong, but, but you know what I mean? So, but they would get the gift of the Holy Ghost as well. And speaking in tongues would be the other baptism they would get. But what Paul is going after here, Paul is going after the issue that he said, um, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And I'm, I'm going to get back to that in a second. Uh, we're going to go back over that in a second, because what he's saying is God didn't send me to 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 come here and, and be an instructor in Christ. He didn't send me. You guys are already saved. You guys need some doctrine. You guys need you guys need the word of God dwelling richly within you. And not with words of wisdom, man's wisdom. That's what he's going to go after. He's going to go in chapter two. He's going to be talking about man's wisdom versus the wisdom of God. I'm not, I'm not coming in. It's not about my wisdom. He's going to be preaching the power, the power that is in the living word, the living God. But let's just, let's move on. Come over to verse 17 now. Well, again, let's go look at verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Folks, I know what I'm saying here is not is not popular, so to speak. But that's why you take God's word and you be fully persuaded in your own mind. But what you do is look at the context. You look at the context and context water is not in here but what gets people to fight against it is verse 17 for christ sent me not to baptize and some would say okay he sent me not to water baptize and you would think paul would be distinguishing the difference between water versus the one baptism yeah he does over in chapter 12 he doesn't do it in chapter 12, he just says baptized. For by one spirit are y'all baptized into one body. That, that's what it says over there. Christ sent me not to baptize over here. There's no distinguishing between water or, or gift of the Holy Ghost. Or you were to know it's the one baptism. And if you don't think so, that's why. It, let's just look at it. Look at uh, chapter 3 now. For while one saith, now this is Paul, this is Paul, base, this is Paul summing it up. What he said over there about, they're saying they're of this guy and of that guy. Notice what he says in verse four. For while one saith, I am of Paul, another I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? Who then is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. Now, they they believed them, whether it was I or they. And it says here, they believed those guys. So those that say I'm of Paul or I'm of Apollos and I'm of Cephas, you know, that's their they're ministers by whom they believed. What happens when we believed? Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We believe we are baptized into one body. They were baptized by hearing Apollos. They were baptized into the body of Christ by hearing what Peter preached unto them. They were baptized by Paul by hearing what Paul preached unto them as well. But what they were lacking is they didn't understand that they were Christ's and Christ and, and God's. <clears throat> That's who they belong to. And, and But notice what he's going to say in verse 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. You notice he's not mentioning Peter, even though he mentioned Peter before. And that, different program, but the idea, 
as I said, the reason why he's not mentioned them here, he, he mentioned them already over in chapter um, chapter one there, but that's a different situation there, folks. Um, I have planted Apollo's water, but notice this, God gave the increase, and that's what he want them to know. They are gods. That's who they belong to. It's Peter and, and, and Paul and Cephas only got them saved. That's it. They became baptized by hearing the word from those men. Look at uh, look at Galatians now. Well, verse 30. Let's look at verse 7 now. Chapter 3, verse 7. And the, notice what he says here. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. That's what he wants you to know. They're, they're divided because they got saved by what Apollos, or they got saved by Apollos. These guys got saved by Paul. These guys got saved by Peter. And then they're like, and Paul saying, wait a minute, who are they? They're only ones that planted and watereth. God's the one that give the increase. Uh, look, look at Galatians 3 now. <clears throat> Galatians 3, look at verse 2. This, what I, this only what I learn of you, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? That uh, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit, worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Now you see, you begun in the spirit, you begun in the living word of the living God. And are you now made perfect by the flesh? What Paul is saying is you're trying to go and perfect yourself by the flesh and not by the spirit. The spirit, he says, you begun in the spirit, you begun in the spirit, the living word of living God. Now you're trying to make yourself perfect by the flesh. The only way it can be done is by the spirit. And that's what he's going to say over in, in, in Galatians about being led by the spirit, being after the spirit, be in the spirit. If you're in the spirit, you can't be, the spirit lusts against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit so that you cannot do the things that you would do. But it's all, this is all going after folks is as, as, Galatians chapter three said, you begun in the spirit when they, what happened is faith came by hearing, hearing by the word of God. It became a spiritual transaction for the believer. The believer himself became baptized into one body by the hearing of the word, by the spirit. And, and, and from that point on, you're going to continue in the word. And that's what Paul is saying. You started off that way and now you're trying to perfect your, you're trying to become perfect by the flesh. This foolishness, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, ye should not obey the truth. But let's move on for time's sake. Come over now back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And look at, um, look at verse 13. <clears throat> Sorry, folks. Uh, had um, drinking some Gatorade and it went down the wrong windpipe. <laughs> ah, but hey, that's another issue. Ah, so all this talk about water, baptism, and stuff like that, and drink made to drink. <laughs> yeah, look, look at verse thirteen. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have been all. We have all been made to drink into one spirit. Now, I want you to know, and see, this is where people get mixed up as well. Paul's saying whether you be Jews or Gentiles, whether you be bond or free, we have been all made to drink into one spirit because that's one living word. Doesn't the Gentile church have the word of God? Well, sure they do. Don't we have 13 books? Of course we do. But it's by one spirit, by one living word, are we all made to drink? Well, we're all baptized into one body. We're all baptized into Christ. We all, whether it's Peter or whether it was 
Paul, or whether it's me today, I am in Christ, and so are they. And Paul says that over there in Ephesians chapter uh, 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 2 and 3. And so, and, and all, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now we're going to look at the issue of made to drink into one spirit in these next few minutes that we have left. Um, and made to drink. Well, how do you drink into one spirit? Remember, we just got through looking at, at, at the cup of the Lord. When we looked at the cup of the Lord, when Paul says for us, oft as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he come. Whosoever therefore, wherefore whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that drink eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And that eating and drinking worthily or unworthily ought to be understood by the saints that that's talking about the ministry and it's talking about the love of God. It's talking about the selfless love of God. And again, I'm switching the board, folks, so that's bear with me. <laughs> But, but um, that's what it's going after. And when it says you are all made to drink into one spirit, well, the cup, the cup itself, the ministry. And with this cup, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. But we're all made to drink into one living word, folks. And, and, and you'll see that. Look, look at uh, Ephesians five, <clears throat> and we'll uh, we'll come back to that in the next study, um, verse thirteen. Yeah, we yeah. We're going to look at spiritual gifts. I'll, we'll look at that then. Look at Ephesians 5. And look at verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Notice it's walk. How are you going to walk? How are you going to continue? How are you going to live? And the only way to know how to live and how to live is by the living word of God. That's the only way a person is going to put off and cast cast off and put on. You're putting on the word. But that's how you're going to walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise. The only way you can be wise is by the wisdom of God. Look at uh, verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And that, that says it there. Only way you can understand the will of the Lord is you have to know what the Father has given for us to understand. And the only way you can know that is by the living word of God. Put your nose in the King James Bible. It's the only way you're going to know. And yeah, I said it. King James Bible. Look at verse 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I'm going to read that again because verse 17, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's being filled with the living word of the living God. That's being made to drink into one Spirit. See, that's why Paul says, be not drunk with wine. But if you want to be filled with something, be filled with the living word of God. We've been made to drink into one spirit. Now come over to Philippians, <clears throat> Philippians 3. Philippians 3, look at verse 3. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. And I put that there because um, Paul's talking about worship. How are you going to worship? And if this says worship God in the spirit, that's in your inner man. If you're made to drink it to one spirit, remember, and some would say, wait a minute, it says made to drink into one spirit. Yeah, but it's in your inner man. Even though you're made... Well, let's just put it like this. Aren't we in Christ? Couldn't we put on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? 
You're told to be led by the word, uh, 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 led by the spirit. And that, that was small case S there, that we worship God in the spirit, have no confidence in the flesh. That's because being led of the spirit, understanding the spirit itself is how they that are saved is gonna, are going to live unto godliness. That's being after the spirit and, and all those things made to drink into one spirit. And being made, to, as I said before, being made to drink into one spirit, most people look at that like, well, wait a minute, into? Well, what that mean about drink into? It partake, uh, uh, being able to, uh, uh, we're to, as I may mention about 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he talks about, and let a man eat of that bread and drink of that cup and, and, um, and all that, because drinking of it is also partaking of it, but you're in, you, you're, you're, you're as one in oneness, unity of the spirit. What we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, um, move on. Let's come over to Galatians chapter five, Galatians five. Let's take a look at verse 16, and, and I figure we'll look at this because this will explain what I just got through saying about being after and walking in the spirit and drinking of this, drinking in one spirit. Look at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, if we walk in the living word of God, folks, and after the living word of God, you're not going to fulfill the lust of your flesh. If that's your walk, but you got, you can walk one, you can, you're going to continue one way or the other, which, and this tells you this verse 17 for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And notice it says they're contrary so that ye cannot do the things ye would. This is what Paul makes mention when Paul talks about, and God made a way for us to escape. He gave us a way to escape over there in chapter 10. <clears throat> and, um, well, yeah, first Corinthians chapter 10, when he says, um, God will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Well, this is the, God knows that if you walk in the spirit, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's what this provision is given for us. And, and, and but as long as you, the saint, uh, desire, lusteth, lusteth after the spirit, and you could lust after the spirit, as this says here in verse 17, you are going to put off and cast off and not be and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's why it says the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Spirit lusts against the flesh. But look, look at what um you ought to be lusting against uh, 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 for God's word truth being led of it. Look at verse 18. But if you be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. And I went over that the last time that be when it talks about that be under the law is the issue that these things are going to these things won't apply to you because you're going to be walking according to the spirit the the, the, uh, the law is not going to be put on blast so to speak uh, that you're not walking according to it but look at verse 19 I, I i covered that in the last study there if you want more on that uh look at verse 19 now the works of the flesh are are manifest which are these adultery fornication uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies envyings murders drunkenness revilers revilings and such a like of which i tell you before as i've told you often in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of god 
But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, again, that's the key there. Against such there is no law. And that's why he says in verse 18, but if you're led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. And look at verse 24. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the with the affections and lusts. Uh, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we live in the spirit, notice that. Live in the spirit. I thought we we're made to drink into one spirit. Live in the spirit, that, that continue your functional life in the spirit. Let us also walk in the spirit. But both live in the spirit, live in the spirit, and walk in the spirit. Jesus Christ, the, 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 the word of God, and, and which was delivered unto the, the apostles of, uh, uh, um, and the apostle Paul for us. Live in the spirit. Let's also walk in the spirit, the living word of God, our Bibles. And, you know, I I'm, I'm, don't want to move fast, folks, but and that's why, I, I, you know, when I'm going over doctrine, I'll say, just go to this study and that study. You know, I told a group of saints who who meet and they 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 listen to my study, you know, uh, on the Thursday night Bible study. They, they listen there and they said, hey, we got to cut it short because this and that and people are going out of town and things like that so i'm just um i told them i promised them i'll keep it more towards one hour because they're going to leave right after the study so that's just giving you that heads up and that's why i'm doing a little faster here but um in the next study we're going to be going over the spiritual gifts we're going to be going over chapter 12 there and we're going to be looking at when paul says not concerning spiritual gifts i would not have you to be ignorant and what he's going to be saying, and what that what that all entails about being about that being the temporary, the um, less excellent way of getting uh, uh, the power of God, the word of God, the will life of God across unto man, and unto the unto not just the unsaved but also to the saved as well. They're, and all those temporary spiritual gifts are gonna we're going to uh, be done away but at a specific time, and we'll get into that. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Until next time, thank you.